So ISNA is identified by the government as a Muslim Brotherhood organization that funds the terrorist group Hamas. Here's their leader, Imam, their former president, uh, vice president for years, their president for years, Imam Mohammed Majid, also the executive director of the Adams Center in Sterling, Virginia, visited by the P Fairfax police chief, the U.S. member of Congress um, who represents the area, state legislators falling over themselves to talk about what a great guy Mohammed Majid is. Uh, and he's the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood organization that funds the terrorist group Hamas. Here he is uh, at the White House. There he is. You see the arrow there. There's President uh, Obama. Here he is in 2005 at the FBI's Washington field office getting an award from the special agent in charge, Mike Rollins, for being a great member of the committee community. And here he is just in 2016 with former director, FBI director Comey at FBI headquarters getting the director's award. Staggering. Here's the FBI's uh, website, official website, FBI.gov, listing their community outreach partners and of the three organizations that they list that are Muslim organizations they do outreach with, all three are Muslim Brotherhood organizations. So if you're wondering why the FBI is confused, this might give you a little bit of an indicator as to why. They also recruit FBI agents out of Islamic Horizons magazine, which is the monthly publication of the Islamic Society of North America, the Muslim Brotherhood group that funds the terrorist group Hamas. Now, all of that is a prelude to talking about the network here in the United States that supports the spread of Sharia, the shutting down of truthful discussion about Islam and its danger to the United States and the West. So part of their network includes the over 3,100 Islamic centers or mosques in the United States, which the Muslim Brotherhood says are the axis of their movement to supply their battalions. And oh, by the way, we pray there. Now we spoke before uh, and Chris mentioned it. What is a mosque? A mosque is what Muhammad says it is. And what it is essentially, it's the seat of the Islamic government to adjudicate Sharia, to have community functions, to teach about Islam. Yes, they pray there, but they also train jihadis, house jihadis, plan battles, and it's the place from which the battles are launched. That is what a mosque is in Islam, um, because Muhammad's the perfect example, and that's what he used it for. And since the purpose of Islam is to establish Sharia in the law of the land, and the mosque is the center of the community, its primary purpose is that. It's the seat of the government. So of the 3,100 mosques, we know through ownership of Nate and by the fact that Muslim Brotherhood leaders are leaders of uh, numerous Islamic mosques, we also not know from the Sharia mapping survey, which our own Chris Gobbets participate in when he was undercover, demonstrates that um, over 80% of the mosques uh, are teaching Sharia and teaching violent jihad um, inside the mosques. Uh, and we're seeing Sharia adherents in those places. So we know that the vast majority of the 3,100 mosques are doing what they're supposed to be doing, but certainly doing what the Muslim Brotherhood uh, has them doing. And why is that? Because most of these places are funded and built by Saudi Arabia and other hostile nations uh, terrorist nations, Saudi Arabia and Iran being the two uh, most significant funders, nation state funders of terrorism on the planet. So how there are allies, Saudi Arabia, your guess is as good as mine. Um, and then we want to, I just want to talk about this. If you look at this chart from our friends at uh, Americans for Peace and Tolerance in Boston, Charles Jacobs, thank you. Uh, Ilya Feoktistov uh, did this chart several years ago. It goes up until about uh, 2007 or so. And we see that if you map the number of nonprofit Islamic organizations with Muslim Brotherhood doctrine, there is a correlation. And that's not accidental. We see that in the early 1980s, when they create the Islamic Society of North America to be an umbrella for the first many Islamic organizations created by the Brotherhood, we see that they create a huge, about 100 organizations um, 
in the United States, Islamic centers, Islamic societies. Then we see it tapers off. And then in 1991-92, when they create their strategy memorandum we just talked about that shows uh, we need to wage civilization jihad. And in that explanatory memorandum, which is also at Understand the Threats website, under our resources page, we see that they say that America is a nation that only understands organizations. If you go to a member of Congress or you go to a leader and you represent just you, you don't have nearly the impact if you say, I represent fill in the blank, uh, the Muslim Public Affairs Council. I represent the Council on American Islamic Relations. I represent Muslim advocates. I represent uh, Muslim Legal Fund of America. Whatever it is, you go represent an organization. So they then uh, published in 1992 their implementation manual, which implements the strategy and calls for the creation of many organizations. And what happens? They create them to the tune of 80 to 120 per year, all the way through today. Now, the mothership of their movement it, today is the U.S. Uh, Council of Muslim Organizations, the first Islamic political party in the United States, created in the summer of 2014. It is the nucleus for what they're doing now, and it is uh, flexing its muscle. And let me just say, they are making great strides. The Muslim Legal Fund of America has, is creating and organizing an army of attorneys so that any time any legal action is taken by the government, there will be immediate um, uh, roadblocks by the Muslim Brotherhood, by their attorneys, uh, to stand in the, in the way of it. Um, so, for instance, you saw that when President Bush issued um, his executive order to shut down immigration from dangerous nations uh, in the world, one of the plaintiffs was the Muslim Association of Hawaii, which is a Muslim Brotherhood organization owned by the North American Islamic Trust. So you have the, the example of legally the Muslim Brotherhood directly challenging the President of the United States. And instead of being crushed and that uh, organization being bulldozed and seized by the U.S. government and their leaders arrested, we're dealing with them in court as if they're just any other civil organization. They are part of a revolution in this country to overthrow our government. We need to begin treating them, this as a war, and realizing that these are not simply legal actions, these are tactics in a much broader war. And we need to start addressing it in those terms. The US CMO is right now the lead entity. But there are many other entities, and if we look at these entities, ISNA, Nate, ICNA, all of them listed there, this is not by any means an exhaustive list of the Muslim Brotherhood organizations, but they're ones that we just walked through even briefly to show you each of them have mission, uh, specific missions. If we understand, for instance, out of the 3,100 plus Islamic centers mosques in the United States, the vast majority of them are uh, hostile. If we look at the fact that there are over 700 Muslim student associations on every major college campus, that there are, uh, as of last week, about 320 Islamic societies across the United States, Islamic Society of uh, Virginia, Islamic uh, Society of Greater Houston, Islamic Society of fill in the blank, Chattanooga, Tennessee. These are hostile organizations in your communities um, and they need to be dealt with. And there's probable cause that they can be uh, shut down, the property seized, the leaders arrested. Um, that's what needs to begin happening. So when you start adding these numbers up, you realize that there are thousands of organizations operating in the United States as a matter of evidence and fact, whose stated objective is to wage jihad until we are defeated. Now, the primary way the Muslim Brotherhood does it, as you remember we just mentioned, is not on the battlefield. This is more a counterintelligence and espionage matter. This is subversion. It's political warfare. It is propaganda. That is how they intend to win this war. It is influence operations here in the United States to co-opt our leaders and convince them that what they're telling them is true. They've done it since 
It's why our war fighting strategies in Iraq and Afghanistan are utterly incoherent, which is why our military courageously fought and destroyed the enemy on the battlefield, yet we lost the wars. They don't intend to win on the battlefield. We have to understand this. They are unified with Al-Qaeda, the Islamic State, Hamas, Hezbollah, all the violent jihadi groups, with all the nation states under the Organization of Islamic Conference, including Iran, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Kuwait, Jordan, Egypt, these countries that are all a part of the OIC, who says that for them, human rights, as we talked about yesterday, is the implementation of Sharia. They seek to establish an Islamic State on the planet.